like now to pass the floor to MEP Sabine Verhen, who's the chair of the European Parliament's Culture and Education Committees, to just give your reflections and final thoughts after such a rich exchange this afternoon. Yes, first I would like to say thank you for inviting me to speak the closing remarks and I'm very happy to speak to you again on the annual conference of the Culture Deal. And I want to thank Culture Action Europe for organizing this event uh, at the right, right time uh, to, to go forward with the ideas on uh, the uh, Cultural Deal. Um, in 2020, I opened my speech by saying that the pandemic has turned our life upside down. But now we are used to the new normal, uh, wearing masks, keeping our distance and having to go without many things that bring us joy, like theatres, concerts. Unfortunately, something else I said back then is still true. People working in the cultural and creative sector are still hit particularly hard. It was a, a, a pleasure to listen to the contributions of so many players in the diverse field uh, of uh, culture. And we have heard a lot of the importance of the sector and the role it can play for the EU Green Deal and the sustainable future. And I think the Green Deal is not uh, uh, reachable without a cultural change and without the cultural sector being a big player in this. At the end of 2019, before the pandemic, the cultural and creative economy was a European heavyweight, uh, a fact that is too often forgotten. During the pandemic, the sector was and still is one of those that suffered the most. Losses in the billions, artists working in jobs other than their actual profession. And this is the reality for the cultural sector hit by the COVID-19 crisis. I'm pleased that many member states have decided to include the cultural sector in their recovery plans, but not all of them did. However, there is still great potential for more improvement. A big step in this direction would be for each member state to follow the call from the European cultural and creative sector to allocate 2% of the funds of each national recovery and resilience plan explicitly for culture. But as I already said, Unfortunately, it's not everywhere the case. Nevertheless, the campaign A Cultural Deal for Europe was a success. It achieved to put a spotlight on the cultural sector, what is it needs, but also what it can do for our society and the possibilities it holds for other policy fields. Therefore, I'm very happy that it will be continued and that we can strengthen it. As bad as this pandemic has been, it has also stimulated creativity. And we have seen so many good ideas during this crisis. Many organizations have shown their innovative power by experimenting with possible alternatives. The absence of culture in its various forms at the beginning of the pandemic, the subsequent creativity of this sector and the start of cultural events, such as theaters or concerts when it was finally possible again, have shown to us once more how important this sector is for us and for the whole society. Thus, the pandemic also showed us how important culture is for the well-being of each and every human being. Therefore, the cultural sector is also necessary to relaunch the growth of the value chain and contribute to the European and national economy, employment, diversity, and cultural identity after the pandemic. We must do everything possible to ensure that the cultural sector recovers from this crisis and becomes globally competitive again. This will be linked to the general recovery in the European Union. To repeat more from 2020, there will be no real recovery without culture. This post-crisis recovery, in line with the motto, build back better, is not primarily about restoring the situation before the pandemic. Rather, it is a starting point for building a better future for the EU and its future generations. And the cultural sector has a huge potential to, potential to make this possible, as we were able to experience once again through the various ideas that were presented here today. The challenges we face in Europe are various. Not only the pandemic, but also climate change and digitization are forcing us to rethink old patterns and to take new paths together if we want to achieve the goal 
of a climate neutral continent by 2050. The Green Deal not only challenges the economy to reorganize itself, but it requires a rethinking from all of us, from all Europeans and their way of living and thinking. Such cultural change requires artists and cultural organizations to play their part. They can help raise awareness of the need for change and motivate and empower people to contribute themselves. We as CART Committee are very aware about the power of European content as a mirror that expresses and reflects the state of our societies and communities and is potential to contribute to a real green and sustainable change. We have always been at the forefront of supporting the creativity of European ideas and we also want to strengthen and support the role of the cultural sector in this fundamental transformation of our society. Therefore, I'm happy that Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has said on several occasions that the Green Deal must first and foremost be a new EU cultural project to reconcile design and sustainability. In this framework, the Commission has launched a new European Bauhaus movement. We heard a lot of this during this meeting, a space of collaboration design and creativity where architects, artists, students, engineers, social workers, designers, they all work together to realize this vision of a holistic approach in our living environment. The central goal of the initiative is to find new ways to make Europe climate neutral by 2050. Reducing emissions alone will not be enough with that. And so the new European Bauhaus is to incorporate ideas from all disciplines. The idea is to create a collective movement that will help, help to improve the quality of life and help the EU's Green Deal reach the people. Last year, we already saw the great potential of this project where people from different disciplines think about the world of tomorrow. Prices were allocated to projects in 10 categories, including mobilization of culture and arts and preservation of cultural heritage. I'm happy that this project was so successful and that we are continuing it this year. Currently, there is still the possibility to apply with projects and I'm already excited to see which innovative ideas will come together this year. The European Bauhaus has the potential to trigger real change. It can contribute to developing affordable solutions for livable living, working and leisure spaces for our EU citizens and to realizing the Green Deal. Spending money on culture and cultural education is an investment in the future of the continent. We must use this crisis as an opportunity to redefine our priorities because art and creativity are what defines us as people, what shapes us as a society, what holds the mirror up to us. It is systematically relevant for our society, especially in crisis. Without culture, there can be no real recovery of Europe from the pandemic. And above all, there cannot be a real transformation of the EU into a climate neutral continent by 2050 without culture. Thanks to many creative minds, artists, authors, filmmakers and actors, we can draw from such a rich cultural diversity in Europe and we have to preserve and to protect it and support those who enrich it with their art and creativity. European culture, our common cultural heritage and strong European values define our identity, our thinking and determine our actions. It is therefore crucial for a united Europe and fundamental for the future of the EU. I hope that we will work on ideas to trigger further change through culture in the future and on possibilities to support the sector in this undertaking. And at least I would like to say thank you to Culture Action Europe for making today happen, for enriching us all with this excellent event, with this exchange of ideas for the development of the cultural deal in the next years. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sabine, for summarizing all the different things that you've heard today and all the different initiatives that are going on. Of course, we were accompanied today by the visual uh, artist Mena, and let's have a look at how she would like to sum up her experience of this very rich conversation this afternoon.
Thank you, Tenzin. Um, I'm just going to put on a little time lapse replay so you can see the drawing happen. The, the program I draw in does this automatically for me, so that's that's handy. So this is the part you already saw. This was the first chapter. And here you can see that I'm running out of space because so much interesting stuff is being said. So I had to make it a bit smaller. Um, I'm going to do a bit more work on this after the event and um, put everything in the right structure and add a few drawings because as you see, there's a few more quotes that I haven't made drawings by yet. And when it's all done, um, I think everyone is going to be able to see it. it. It will probably be online. So the last little bit. Mena, just looking at that picture, I can see how much rich content there was. It's a bit, been a bit of a marathon this afternoon, but wow, there was so yeah. much exchange. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. Um, but I've, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of high energy conversation uh, and also from the chat. And um, yeah, I really hope that I've summarized it in a way that people will recognize. Um, and, and thank you so much for having me again. Well, thank you very much for being with us and sharing the, your creative skills this afternoon. Let me now turn to the three organizations that were at the genesis of this afternoon's conversation. I'd like to ask each of them to just Give me one takeaway from this afternoon's conversation. And let me start with Ter Badia from Culture Action Europe. Well, thank you. That, that's something uh, is uh, one takeaway. Yeah, the takeaways, I think that uh, we have been he hearing a lot that we are at the turning point. I, I hope so. Um, I believe that we must, uh, I really think that really we must bear in mind that the cultural dimension is behind everything, so that the human, all the human behavior that the, and also behind the systems that we create in both sides, uh, in the bright and the dark sides. And that's why it's very difficult to understand that we don't have a clear goal in for, for culture in the SDGs, and we don't see culture in the fourth pillar uh, as a fourth pillar. Uh, that the cultural the dimension is only timidly considered in other policy fields, that cultural rights are still not included in the European and the global agenda. So there's a lot of, uh, ahead of us. But again, for making this possible, I think we need sustainable cultural sector. It's fundamental. It's essential to strengthen the cultural ecosystem, to adequately support artists um, with uh, fair working conditions, to support cultural agents and organizations in its work in all its diversity, because we have a lot of diversity, and this is very important. And to this end, it is true that we need to be bolder, and we have to raise the voice even louder. And that's why I, I think the Cultural Day for Europe is all the more necessary as an umbrella strategy to ensure the central space for culture, to rebuild the cultural fabric, and to strengthen the, all those who make it possible. So it's my takeaways, please endorse the, the, the cultural deal and help us shape it. Thank you very much. Andre. Uh, um, thank you. My, my key takeaway is I'm, I'm actually amazed that um, last year the cultural deal was an idea. And, and today we heard uh, the president of the commission, um, the French presidency, all sorts of people talking about the cultural deal as reality and making big commitments. And, and there was a lot of political will, there was a lot of uh, will from the civil society, from foundations, from many people. So I, I think we have a lot of uh, big commitments and I'm very happy about that. But the key thing for me is how can we turn the, the big commitments into reality. How can we make it happen? And and that needs uh, continued um, work, continued support. By but uh, having looked at how far we have come from last year to this year, I'm 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 optimistic. And so I'm I'm going out of this optimistically. And in a usual meeting, we would go out and have a drink and um, um, celebrate a little bit. So we have to do that another time. But yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Andrei. Snitschka. 
My takeaway is uh, yet another proof that l'union fait la force. Um, we have demonstrated that um, uh, when we started performing as a trio, our three organizations, uh, September 2019 it started, suddenly, you know, we entered in a sort of process of uh, acceleration. Um, yeah, the times are also accelerating, challenges are accelerating, but our movement is accelerating. And I want just to remind people who are still watching us that in September 2019, we have been still fighting to get culture in the title of Commissioner Gabriel. Two and a half years later, we had the president of Andrelay and we had uh, two commissioners. Uh, we had so many influential members of the European Parliament, Committee of the Regions, the sector uh, represented in all its diversities. And indeed, like I believe that the cultural deal is already starting to be um, a reality as uh, Andre, I'm an optimist and I see the glass half full but of course we still have to uh, put much more pressure to unite even more our um, uh, voices and resources and it's also great to see that all institutions uh, we have so many allies and I want to uh, also mention that European Economic and Social Committee, they were not speaking, but Lukas Ayer, former president, he was commenting, sending me chats, so they are also with us. Uh, so all that to say that indeed we are much more, we are an important sector, as Tere said, but we are also a vector to achieving all priorities and strategic goals of the European Union. So I would like to refer to uh, Gijs de Vries, let the silos dance. I want to be even more bold. I'm sure Heis would agree with me. I think he was just a little bit diplomatic. Let the silos disappear. We don't want them to dance. We want them to disappear. That the really and truly that integrated approach and mainstreaming is going to become a, a reality. And let me end where we also started this event. Um, the beautiful, moving words of David Sassoli, whom we miss so much. Uh, I think he, in so little words, he encapsulated the total spirit of our cultural deal. It's just, he transformed it into the political vision and leadership for Europe. We owe him a lot. And I believe that the day of today, was the best tribute, this uh, uh, webinar that you, Tremblin, also moderated wonderfully, was the best tribute to his memory and to his legacy. And I think with his uh, call when he said culture is has a cat cathartic power and it is not something uh, uh, sort of peripheral, it is at the heart of our endeavor to build a new world I think that that is the way forward, and I'm very optimistic, like André and like Tere, we will do it if we do it together. Thank you, all three of you, for sharing your experience and also, again, highlighting how this is, was a, an idea just a few years ago. Look how far we've come. I want to say a warm thank you to all of you who joined us. As I said at the beginning, we had more than 2,200 people who signed up to say, we're interested in your conversation, we want to be part of it. And throughout this afternoon, you've stayed with us, you've engaged with the mentee, you have put your information on the chat. We have really felt you as a vibrant presence, even if we couldn't physically be together. An event like this, complex as it is, wouldn't happen without an amazing organizational technical team. You can't see them, but they're surrounding me in this room. I want to say thank you to all of it who made it look so easy, but it was quite difficult to put together. It was a long piece of work, but I hope you recognize how valuable and useful it was. It was an incredibly dynamic conversation. And finally, the European cultural deal is not yet a done deal. We still need people to back it, put some energy behind it, and keep this momentum going. So I invite you to keep using the hashtag cultural de deal EU. Go onto the website, endorse it, and share it. And let's make sure it isn't just a nice idea, it's actually delivered. Thank you all, and goodbye from Brussels.